This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and today I'm pleased to have Travis Stever of Coheed and Cambria on the show. Ooh. How you doing, buddy? Good. We're on a, a tour called Never Ender, which is named after one of our songs. Perfect name for the whole thing, because what we do in every city that we're hitting is four nights and an album a night, and we have four albums, obviously, so... Um, We've been we we did it in New York, which was amazing, and we've already done it in Chicago, which is just as amazing. And now here we are in L.A., sold out for four nights, and we're really excited to to bring it to L.A. and see what happens. How did you meet Claudio Sanchez, and how did you bond as friends? We we met through a mutual friend um, when we were like 12 and 13 years old, or something like that. You know, very young, and we met through music. I mean, it was a friend of mine who I grew up with named Rory Honberger, and he invited me over one day to play with his one of his good friends, which was Claudio, and he thought that maybe we'd all connect, and uh, and here we are. Were you guys rowdy? I got myself into some trouble numerous times, but Claudio was was always really good. So your parents were supportive of your music. Actually, my parents, I grew up, you know, around them playing music. I mean, my mother and my father met in an off-Broadway um, production of, of Jesus Christ Superstar. Whoa! So they were traveling doing that, and that's how they met. So you know didn't work out my father my father stuck true to the you know being a rocker and wanting to do music and my mom was kind of like done with it so they split up and but I mean I still grew up around that atmosphere Claudio also had musicians in his family how did the band Shibuti evolve into Coheed and Cambria we actually had changed the lineup quite a bit I joined in Shibuti later and like I said Claudio and I played in numerous bands together but uh, we weren't in a band together at that time and, and eventually he came and he said well why don't you join this band Shibuti that that I've been in and you know and and we joined up and and for a little while I was in that lineup which was with a different drummer a drummer by the name of Nate Kelly and uh and that didn't really work out and we were starting to change as a band and that's when Josh you know the original drummer of Kohe joined and as the sound started to change we realized that the name wasn't very fitting anymore because it's just kind of a weird name you know what I mean it sounds more like a funk jam band in our opinion so you know and that's never what the band was anyway but we were starting to change so much that it was like didn't tie into it at all Claudio had a, a side project named Coheed and Cambria that had a story that went with it and eventually we were so stumped for a name that everybody said well that's a really cool name actually and we adopted that name therefore we adopted the story and it's been this has been Coheed and Cambria ever since. Coheed and Cambria are two parental figures who find out that their world is, is uh, not what they have thought it was their whole life basically their minds were erased and um, there's new, numerous trials and tribulations, and and in the, and actually very early on in the story, you know they they die. I don't want to give too much away from it, and obviously it's not my my deal. But um, what happens in the end is basically it's it's about their son's quest for vendetta. There's numerous different angles to the story, but that's kind of a little breakdown. Chris Penny of Dillinger's Escape Plan, yes sir, is a drummer for Coheed and Cambria now. What do you feel he's brought to the mix? Not only has he brought a really strong work ethic that he carries with him because he's really dedicated to anything he does, but it, musically he's you know brought a whole different level to the band, you know what I mean? Because he's, you know, he's talented in every direction, you know, just not just drumming, you know, he's like, he's really amazing with, with, with everything musically. He's just an all around talented dude. And to have somebody join into a family kind of atmosphere like he has and, and, you know, and be able to adapt and become such a part of it so quickly. I mean, you know, I'm pretty blessed to have that. Chris didn't play on the latest album. No, he didn't because of contractual reasons that he had with his band that he was in prior to Coheed. But you got Taylor Hawkins to come in and play on it. He did amazing, and you know we are we are so thankful and so happy that he was able to work with us. Um, you know it was cool because Chris did write those tunes with us. You know, and he was a big part of it. But then Taylor came in and he added he added a lot of his own kind of elements to it because. You know, if anybody plays parts to anything, whether it be guitar, drums, bass, any singing, whatever, it's always going to be different if it's if it's somebody else playing something that you did. And so obviously he put his own kind of you know sprinkles on it. But at the same time, Chris Chris was a big part of writing that album. Are you a Foo Fighters fan? Yes, I am. What was it like for you personally to have Taylor Hawkins come in and play on your music? 
a little surreal at first, but he was such a down to earth dude and such a nice guy that it was kind of like, you know, we just kind of fit with each other. You know, he had, I mean, for me personally, we had a lot of similar music interests, you know, like, you know, he's a huge, uh, Joe Walsh fan. He's a really big King Crimson fan. And if I connect with people on the, on those different kinds of music, you know, it's always really cool to just have like dorky conversations about it and shit. And it was cool to be able to do that with him. How important was it for you to have Welcome Home be a part of the rock band video game? It's absolutely huge because the fact is, you know, the um, the kids now and are just people, not just kids. I shouldn't even say, you know, one of one of the reasons that they get into certain music now is because they hear it on those games, especially a game like that where it's it's really based on playing the music. What do you love most about Claudio Sanchez? He's one of the most talented dudes I know, and beyond that, he's got an amazing work ethic. You may not realize it, but there's kids out there that consider you to be a rock star. Yeah. No, I, I and which is pretty amazing to think that. I don't think of myself that way, and I think that for me personally, I wake up every day, especially doing these shows, and I feel lucky that we're even in a position that we are where we can be doing these albums and 2,000 people give a shit to you know be there and love it you know that's pretty amazing you know and then what about the temptations of rock and roll the temptations of rock and roll are not you know i mean i'll be completely honest i'm married and you know i mean i i i sometimes can drink too much I, you know I, I i deal with that little demon but you know i think that i've grown up quite a bit throughout the years you know and i've, I've learned i've learned some uh things from from being around uh, the rock scene, I guess. I mean, you know, like I said, we're pretty good in comparison. But you know, obviously, I'm sure you've heard that our band has gone through some turmoil with uh, with you know substance and stuff like that. And and you know, when you when you're around that and you're in the middle of it, you know, it sucks. But you do learn a lot from it. You know, it sucks to be a part of the the fucking cliche, but if you're stuck in it, you know, it's, at least you could learn from it. And you have, and you've come through, and these tours are a testament yeah. to that. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, that's the other thing. I mean, Claudio and I, another thing I love is that as a person I can turn to in, in a time like that, and, and we're going to have each other's back, you know, and, and that's like real brotherhood. Travis, what brings you the most peace in your life right now? I think the fact, and this is kind of, lame to say but i think the fact that we're almost made it through this whole tour thing and that we actually learned 50 plus songs gives me some peace makes me realize that you know at the in this band and even you know personally i could be a part of something that that can go as far as it needs to go because it took a lot to to put this shit together the blaring out show